Let's check in with a little camera performance chat. Comparing different photography solutions, the OnePlus 3 release marks a nice little moment before we start moving into the major phone releases set for the end of the year. We'll be doing a proper wrap up when new notes and iPhones are released, but for now we can sum up the collection of phones that we've produced real camera reviews for. Many were hoping the G5 was going to be something like a V10 Mini, but LG tackled new territory with a modular battery chin arrangement. The camera also sprouted a whole second sensor with a wide-angle, almost fisheye lens. The things we liked from the G4 remain. This app is nicely laid out with options for the most basic control to full manual options, which include excellent tools for reporting exposure. Still, photo performance is excellent, and LG offers up terrific saturation. Colors pop, but we don't descend into oversaturated output. The second sensor is nicely tied into the experience, and it becomes a standard part of the camera's zoom range. Video isn't this camera's strong suit, however, with zero controls to adjust other than where you focus. And while the imaging and processing features are terrific, the main camera lens is maybe the poorest performer on this list, most prone to aberration and distortion. In all though, the LG G5 is certainly the most flexible camera package of 2016. Now, LG wasn't the only company to release a dual sensor camera this year, but Huawei's approach is about as different as you can get. Here, the two sensors work in tandem to simulate how the rods and cones work in the human eye, delivering incredible color and dynamic range. These sensors were influenced by Leica, and the P9 achieved some of the best photos we've ever seen from a phone camera. You almost never need to use HDR here as the camera naturally maximizes light in almost every shooting scenario. Unfortunately, dual sensors are extremely difficult to sync for image stabilization, so there is no hardware stabilization here. It hasn't proven necessary for photos, but videos suffer when shooting at max quality, and that max quality tops out at 60 frame per second 1080p. Many people might not feel they need higher resolution video, but the mark of a flagship now means tackling UHD, and this is an area the P9 falls behind. Still, this Leica design can't be denied for folks focused on producing the best photos they can from a phone. HTC has had a rough couple of years when it comes to cameras. The HTC 10 marks a course change we're all happy to see. This camera isn't nearly as compromised as previous HTC flagships. Now, it honestly doesn't win many major categories. Dynamic range is good, color saturation is good, HDR is a bit inconsistent but is better than most Androids in taming highlights, and the app is very well laid out for adjusting settings, though some of these sliders can be hard to read in bright light. We can point to audio capture as a substantial victory over competitors, as this phone has terrific microphones and saves lossless audio. Though HTC uses optical image stabilization and the largest ultra pickles of the bunch, we still see some issues with low light photos. They tend to be grainier and handshake can still blur detail more than other options here, even the Huawei. We lack a few features like high frame rate video, but HTC's back to basics approach here delivers a well-rounded shooter that HTC fans will be happy to use. Samsung delivered something really special this year on the S7 camera, starting a trend on walking away from increasing resolution to focus on better low-light performance. The experiment is successful. The Galaxy S7 offers up a terrific app with almost every setting we would want and the most complete set of options for post-processing, though we do wish we had shutter speed and ISO control for video. Performance is generally excellent. Dual pixel technology is no gimmick, and focusing speed here is lightning quick. Samsung still produces saturated and sharpened images, but has toned down some of the more aggressive processing they've been known for in the past, and video performance is top-notch. We gotta dig a little deeper for problems. For example, the S7 has the closest minimum focusing distance for macro shots, but having the widest aperture makes it a bit more difficult to keep your subject in focus before depth of field blur creeps in. See, that's really not much of a bummer. The Galaxy S7, folks, it's a killer camera. But what if you could get like 85% of a great camera for like 60% of the price? We think that would appeal to a lot of folks in our audience, and that's what OnePlus has to offer. It's a very good all-rounder for photos once you figure out a few of the quirks. Solid exposure and saturation with full manual controls, though low-light performance is kind of a mess. That is, until you try out the HDR-style denoise mode, and then your night photos of stationary objects look a lot better. UHD video is on tap, but even with image stabilization, it's still shakier than all but the Huawei. 
and the aggressive noise reduction is a disappointment for the sound in your videos. The OnePlus 3 will make constant noise sound like it's underwater. The thing is, we're okay being a little less critical here. It's really fine that this phone doesn't outright win many fights, as it gets us pretty close to significantly more expensive phones. And there you have it, folks. You can dive really deep on all five of these cameras as each phone has its own examination video linked in the description below. Our real camera review series is still pretty new for this channel, but we've been getting great feedback from our viewers and we're looking forward to running more phones through these tests. Which smartphone camera are you most looking forward to for an intense test and review? Drop us a comment below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more smartphone camera chat and hit that thumbs up button for a little extra positive reinforcement. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next comparison.